Yeah, that made me like sparkles. Like, I know, that's what I was telling her the other day. I was like, we've been really missing our game. Do you want me to add some? Step up the game, Kendra. I, I watch the video, game. I expect to be dazzled. No. <laughs> Whatever. I actually yeah. watched a okay. couple videos. <gasps> I watched the one where I no, I'd help if you watched. Yeah, you probably can. I kind of need help putting it on. So here we go. Anyway, the mystical bird camp that. appears. All right. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay. <laughs> There's one that at the beginning I ask you how to drop out of high school. Uh, I remember. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so let's talk about number 10. Okay, thank you. So here's the same point playing. Here's this clock, right? It's going to slide down. Okay? That is not what I think. And this is a frictionless surface. <coughs> so it's the only thing that's going to make this thing accelerate down the incline plane. Gravity. Gravity. What component of gravity? Uh, normal or parallel? Parallel. parallel. So one option is that you go through here and you find your force parallel using Fg sine theta. Okay. Are there any opposing forces to it? No, no it's frictionless. No, so that's your net force. So divide that by the mass, boom, there's your acceleration. Okay. If you want to shortcut the process since it's frictionless, you can use A equals G sine theta. You just said okay. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Wait, A equals G sine theta? It's okay. I'm already halfway through. No, it's one. No, because if, if 10A is wrong, everything else is going to be wrong. So your answer to 10A should be a little bit above 3 meters per second. Okay. That's the answer? I don't understand. A little bit above 3. Good with that? Oh, I got that. Is this with the. Okay. Now, on B, it's going to come down, it's going to hit this block, and they're going to do the California thing, and they're going to move off together. Okay? Now, so when you find this new velocity, is it going to have the same sign as the block that was sliding down? Yes, because they're going to be moving in the same direction. But is the new velocity going to be bigger or smaller than what you started with when it hit? Why? What's happened to the mass? It's increased, but you still have to have the same momentum. So therefore, as mass goes up, your velocity has to go down. So your answer to B should be less than your answer to A because you increased the mass. Now, pay attention to the fact that I was a jerk when I typed this up and I gave you the weight of the blocks. What do you need to put in there? Mass. Mass. Simple problem, divide by G. Now, but here's the greater significance of this. Is that if I have one kilogram mass on Earth moving at five meters per second, it's going to have the exact same momentum on the moon if I take that one kilogram mass and make it move at five meters per second. Because it's mass times velocity, it isn't weight times velocity. So no matter where I am in the universe, a one kilogram mass moving at five meters per second is always going to have the same momentum because it's independent of a gravitational field. So what you should see on 10 B, C, and D, and this is an ish, okay, this is an ish, but B, C, and D all should be around one, okay? On number 10. On number 10. Now that's an ish, okay? It's an ish. But they all, B, C, and D should all be around one ish. Now, when you get to C, there's a couple of things that you can do. First off, why did I have to make the frictional force negative? It's slowing down with? Friction. But what's the sign of the velocity? Positive. So my frictional force had to be a negative value. So, one of the things you can do, and I don't care how you do this, you end up doing the same math. One option is that you go, oh, I'm going to go old school F equals MA. Cool. Okay, you can do that. But what mass do you use? The combined. Kendra? The combined. Why? Because it's the system. 
Yeah, they're moving yeah. off together, right? They're, they are now one. So your mass has to be the same. So you know the force, you know the mass, find the acceleration, okay? Then you can go old school and go A equals V minus V naught over time. Now, here's what you have to be careful of. The, the velocity that you use on C has to be your answer from B because that's, it's how fast it's moving when the friction kicks in. So your V naught value that you're going to use on C and D isn't your answer from A. It's your answer from B because that's how fast it's moving when they start to slow down. Okay, so be careful of that. Uh, make sure on number 11 that you talk about what happens to all three Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Okay. And if you know Sam Emerson. Yeah, we asked him. Yeah, yeah we, we he, asked him. he wrote this whole, like, novel. And they die this wretched death where they starve. No. Okay. Well, they do. Well, okay. No, yeah. I didn't say that there aren't ships out there to rescue them after the experiment, okay? Yeah, it's, it's his own imagination. It's like he didn't work. Anyway, um, some of your answers, though not very many, should be negative, okay? Uh -oh. um, your answer to number six should involve a six. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Two of your answers to number nine should have the same numeric value. I wish my paper was three. Yeah. Which? You wish what? Yeah, well, there's an incident when my paper got ready. You take it? I don't know. Yeah, it's just really not. I know. You gotta use paper. It's been a bad day. Did you get a haircut? No. Actually, no. 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 So, you won't have to mark up this position before you get What did you do? I positioned it for her. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, don't flip out, even though I call it the explosion lab. No, I'm not going to let you blow anything up. Okay? That's just a recipe for a lawsuit. Okay? So, here's what we've got. You take your take two carts, count them two, one of which has a little plunger on it. Okay. Now, don't sit there and try and like put little stuff on it, like try and launch stuff. It's annoying. Okay. Don't. Bad. Okay. So it works pretty simple. Push it back in. It should lock. If it doesn't lock, there's a little silver tab up here that if you push that in then that will make it lock in place, and then to release it, you press the little button up on top. Okay, pretty simple. So, we're going to use this as the source of the force to make the momentum change. So, we're going to line these up. You need to put a 500 gram mass on one of them. It's exactly 500 grams. You don't have to hang this up by the scale. This is exactly 500 grams. And you're going to put this on one of them. And if you want to tape it down, you can so it doesn't slide. You don't have to, but if you take a little bit of tape, it's cool. Uh, don't do what Nicola's is still taped back there. He just went completely overboard, as him and Sam Emerson <laughs> want to do. So if you want to put some tape on it, that's fine. So here's the basic idea. Is that you want to adjust this, the position of these carts so that they hit the edges of the, the ramp at the same time. So here's the question. Do I want to start it closer to the, this end where I've got the big mass here? Do I want to start it closer to this end where I have little mass towards here? Or since forces are equal and opposite, I want to start it right in the middle. More towards this way. Yep, your way. Yep. This side. Yep. 
Why? Because there's not as much mass. You're right. So what? Well, P equals M B. Yeah. Equal Momentum does reaction. equal mass times velocity. So what? Well, no, no, you're fine. You're, you're, you're fine. How much momentum do I have at the beginning? Zero. Zero. So afterwards, everything has to add up to? Zero. Zero. So if one has positive velocity, the other one has to have a? Negative. And if one has positive momentum, the other one has to have a? Negative. And they still, still should add up to? Zero. So the one with the smaller mass has to have a? Bigger velocity. There you go. Okay. See? Was that so bad? You did it. <laughs> okay. I've done this for quite a while. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Go team. All right. So here's the drill. First off, when you release the plunger. Cubby. 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 Cubby's alive. <laughs> go, Cubby. We've been waiting all day to say Yeah, we, we honestly. We talked about it first block. Yeah. Okay. Is it out of your, are we good now? Okay. All right. So when you release the plunger, don't use your finger because of the fact that your finger is going to get caught on it and it's going to screw up the results. So take like a wooden block, take a meter stick. But if you're going to use a meter stick, don't do like this samurai thing. You go, okay? Bad, don't. Cool, but no, you're going to miss, and things are going to go flying, and it's bad. Good. So, you're going to go, ding! Oh, my God. <laughs> that was impeccable timing. Four on the floor. There's three. <laughs> You know, the coolness level in the room just dropped like a rock. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so speaking of doinks, okay? So, you're going to take a wooden block and you're going to go doink. Okay? And so, you want to adjust that position so that they hit the edge at the same time. So here's the decision that your group needs to make, and I don't care what you do. You either need to decide to go uh, set your initial positions where the two cards meet, okay? And if that's the case, like let's say they're going to both start at, uh, I don't know, 49 centimeters. Then when they hit the edge here and you stop them, then you need to measure to the front edge here. So in other words, don't say, well, we're going to start at 49 here and then call the end position the edge because otherwise you're going to be off by the length of the cart. So either go off the back edges to where the back edges are or go off the front edges to where the front edges are. I don't care. But just make a decision which one you're going to go with. You want a couple people timing this. Ideally, they would have the same time. That's the whole point of it. So you're going to adjust this position so when you release it, they go flying apart, they both hit the edge at the same time. Now, here's the key assumption that we are going to make. The key assumption that we're going to make is that after the spring expands, which is going to take a very, 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 very brief amount of time, Afterwards, we're going to assume that the cards are going to roll with constant velocity. So, to get the momentum, I need two things. I need the mass and I need the velocity. So, how can I find the mass of the cart? Wait, take a Newton scale, hang it up, boom, get a reading, then what? Divide by, by G, there's your mass. So, you're going to do that with both of them. Call one cart one, call one cart two. I don't care which one you call cart one and which one you call cart two. But then add 500 grams to one of them. Keep, keep track of which one you put the 500 gram mass on. So get the weight by itself, get the mass, then just add 0.5 kilograms to it. Don't, you don't have to weigh it with this on. You know this is exactly 0.5 kilograms. Okay, so you got this. Boom, it's gonna go flying apart. Both hit it at the same time. 
don't let these carts roll off the edge. Then they go all the way down to the floor, and they make a lot of noise, and everybody laughs, kind of like, you know, like hypothetically, you fall out of your chair in class. <laughs> okay, it's going to be the same type of situation. Everybody's going to giggle and go. Okay, so not that that would ever happen. Hypothetically. All right. So here's your setup. Here's your carts. Boom. Boom. They're going to go flying apart. So on this data table. Oh my god. <laughs> Good? Maybe you can keep your feet on the floor. I think you need to turn to the office. Oh, Skippy. Oh, Skippy. Okay. Now, on this data table, wherever there's an asterisk, some calculation has to be done. It's probably going to be pretty simple. So, you're going to have position initial, position final, okay? Those are just numbers. Where did they start? Even though this track is laid out in centimeters, make sure you work in meters. Then you're going to have displacement. How are you going to determine displacement? What minus what? Final minus initial. Position final minus position initial. So, you're going to write down dink minus dink, okay? That's all you have to do. That's it. That's all the calculation that you need to show. You're going to have your times, hopefully your times are the same, okay? There might be a little bit of variance, but they should pretty much be about the same time. Velocity initial, pretty simple, zero. Velocity final, to get your velocity final, and even though I lay this out, you all aren't very good at reading directions at times. So, to get the final velocity, we're going to take the displacement, and we're going to divide that by the time to get your velocity. Now, technically, you don't have constant velocity the entire time. Technically, it's at rest and the plunger is pushing away. But that's such a small amount of time relative to this whole thing that we're not going to include it. So to get the velocity of each one, take the, dis take the displacement and divide it by the time that it takes to travel. Boom. There you go. So then you're going to have your change in velocity again. How are you going to get your change in velocity? What minus what? Minus final, final minus initial. Okay? It's going to be the easiest point you ever get in this class. Now, I've got P naught and P and then delta P. Over on this column towards the right, I'm referring that to momentum, not to position. Okay? I'm referring that as your momentum. So at this point, you're going to know the mass of the cart, you're going to know the velocity of the cart, you can find the momentum of the cart as it rolls. What you're ultimately after is the force acting on each cart. Okay, that's what you're ultimately after is the force on each cart. So to get your force, you're going to use the idea that force times time equals change in momentum. So you're going to know the force and you're going to know the change in momentum. Now, listen to me. Even though I tell you in the instructions, again, let me reiterate this. This time is not the time that it's rolling. This time is this 0 .002 seconds or 0 .02 seconds, whatever it is I gave you in the problem. That's the length of time it takes for the plunger to expand. Okay? So when you're doing your force calculation, take your change in momentum and divide it by the time, but this is not the time that it's rolling. What we're assuming is that these cards are going to roll with a constant velocity once the plunger releases. So this time is not the time that it rolls. The 0.02 seconds that I gave you in the problem. Okay? Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Don't use the entire time, worse yet, don't use the mass. Okay. Now, you got some questions to answer. On the back side, let me take you through what I want on number eight. So on number eight, here's the deal. Imagine that we're going to lift up one end of the ramp, okay? And then we got this action going, and then we're going to hit the plunger. So instead of being a level surface, we're going to have this thing slightly elevated. We're going to do the exact same lab, 
but we're going to elevate this. Now, it's important that you pay attention to how I want this system defined. So, if you notice, let me point this out on the break, again, even though I've typed this all out. So, we're going to put a small block of wood under the end of the ramp toward which the more massive cart would roll. So, that's what I just showed. So, we're going to, so let's say that this is the more massive one. This is the end that's going to get lifted up a little, okay? We're not going to make it go vertical. We're just going to put a little block of wood in, okay? That's it. Enough to make a difference, but not, you know, a ramp. Uh, then draw a velocity time graph from the time the spring is released until each one reaches the edge of the ramp, okay? Assume that the more massive card has a positive velocity. So, you're going to hit the plunger. This thing's going to go away. And we're defining this direction as being positive, and this is uphill. Okay? This one's going to be rolling downhill with negative velocity. So I just want to make sure everybody understands what's going to happen with that. Then you've got three, four questions to answer. Okay? You got questions one and two, those you can answer right here. Questions three and four, I want done on another sheet of paper. Do not try and work three and four here. You do not have enough room. Need to write the others, no way I feel like Rollins would try. Rollins, yeah, he has the time. Honestly, yeah. I, I, I'd probably do it. I, that's not the point. It's not a challenge. <laughs> Prove it's wrong. not a challenge. Prove it wrong. <laughs> 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 You're getting the stare and you realize it. Yeah, no, that's okay. Right. <laughs> All right, good. Okay. At least one on the same page. So, <laughs> so three and four work on another sheet of paper, same drill, put your answers on the left, work on the right. Now, as a lab group, before I'm actually going to turn you loose, there's this issue of this pre-lab graph. So, what I want on the pre-lab, and you're only going to turn in one of these per group, do it nicely is what's the velocity time graph going to look like for this situation where it's, where it's on level ground? So in other words, I've got the two carts. I'm going to hit it. It's going to go flying apart. What's the velocity time graph going to look like for the two carts? You're going to have two lines, the less massive cart and the more massive cart. They're both going to start at zero. So that's what I want. So before you actually do the lab, I want that velocity time graph, I'll sign off on it, then you can actually start the lab. Okay? Good with that. So, test over all of this material. It's a relatively short unit. It's going to be a week from today, next Thursday. Okay? So, basically, uh, uh, we've got, we'll finish this up tomorrow. We have a big complex problem tomorrow. We'll do rotational motion Monday, Tuesday, review Wednesday, have the test Thursday. So that's how that's going to play out. What's Friday? Uh, we will start energy. You guys never take any days off, do you? No days off. Not real. Grind on. Where do you want the graph at? Blossom number at? Turn on the graph people. Piece of paper. Or, yeah, just, no, no, yeah, Stretch on it. another sheet of paper. Okay. Just, but again, just make sure everybody's name is on it. And there's a you need to do a really good job recording. All right, I'm done. You're on your own. All right.